that certainly includes baseball. It is game two of this three-game set with the New York Mets, and the Pirates got off to a great start behind eight and a third innings of great work from Garrett Cole. Pirates looking for a little more of the same today from A.J. Burnett. It's the Pirates and the Mets straight ahead right here on Root Sports. Night last night as the Pirates defeated the New York Mets got enough offense Gregory Polanco Jung Ho Gung was once again in the middle of it all and what a performance from Garrett Cole last night almost went the distance he was on fire and our featured band last night on Friday Night Rocks was white like fire and they are performing out on Federal Street festive atmosphere on a beautiful day for baseball in the Berg as we get ready to play game two of this three game series the Pirates and the Mets Greg Brown along with Bob Walk and holy pitching matchups Batman how about today AJ Burnett against Matt Harvey Burnett was tremendous his last time out it's really going to be something special today to watch this I mean both guys are definitely right on their game Harvey has not uh, missed a uh, anything since coming back from injury and Burnett I mean he, he couldn't be any better than what he has done and what's really special about it too is that he's not doing it like he used to throws the ball 95 96 mile an hour now it's all with that two seamer location a lot of good command seven innings of shutout ball against the Cubs at Wrigley Field his ERA second lowest in the National League and he's going up against the young gun Matt Harvey and earlier today Clint Hurdle talked about a good comparison Garrett Cole Matt Harvey similar styles oh really uh, just two guys that you know are going to be I mean, stars for a long, long time in this league. Harvey had the little bump in the road uh, with the Tommy John, but uh, it seems like everybody comes back just as good, if not better, from that. And it's certainly true of Harvey. That ERA of 198 is ninth best in the National League. It is a beautiful day in Gotham as we get ready to play game two of the three game series the Pirates and the Mets from PNC Park. Coming up next.
One year after being rebuilt, Gotham's Dark Knight has risen. Matt Harvey is once again one of baseball's best young pitchers, vanquishing his enemies with ease. And in the Steel City, another Batman has returned for a sequel. A.J. Burnett, back in black, has been dispatching his foes like a cape crusader on a mission. Not the hero we deserve, but the hero we needed. Today, it's the Silent Guardian versus the Watchful Protector. It's the Dark Knight versus Batman. So the scene has been set, and what a scene that is along the banks of the Allegheny River on a spectacular Saturday afternoon. They are getting ready for Batman. And he will make his way out, and of course, dressed in black. Burnett leads the Pirates out to the field. The Buccos beat the Mets 4-1 in last night's ball game. And now the 38-year-old A.J. Burnett having arguably his best season. That's two months into the year, but you look at this long career. So far, this is his best season to date. We take a look at the New York Mets starting lineup. Brought to you by Honda. Curtis Granderson tied for fifth in the, the National League with 24 walks this season. Juan Ligaris follows. Then it's Lucas Duda and Daniel Murphy. Wilmer Flores is the shortstop. Eric Campbell. Darnell Cecilani and Kevin Ploiecki, followed by Matt Harvey, round out the starting nine for the New York Mets. Take a look at uh, AJ's numbers, brought to you by Hyundai. And they are, as you were just saying, Greg, outstanding. Look at that ERA at 138. Uh, maybe he uh, could have a couple more wins. That, that would be the only thing that would make that any better. And the, the wins, well, he should have a couple more wins. We just haven't scored him enough runs. Yeah, he would be right there with, say, a five and one record, 138, with the early favorites for Cy Young. How about that? What if he was to win a Cy Young in his final season in the Major League? That would be yeah. some kind of story. That <laughs> yeah, would. We check out the Honda defense behind him with the Sterling Marte in left and Andrew McCutcheon in center. Gregory Polanco, the right fielder. There you see Jung Ho Gong making the start at shortstop with Josh Harrison at third. Neil Walker and Pedro Alvarez on the right side of the infield. And Francisco Cervelli behind the plate. We hear a lot of cheers from the Mets club here today. They are out in full force. Some thousand plus Mets fans. Got two whole sections taken over. Curtis Granderson leads off. See if A.J. Burnett can silence them right away. It's going to be one of those days where the Pirate fans battle the opposing team's fans here at PNC Park. And we are underway. Ball one. Anderson one for four with a couple of strikeouts last night. Evens the count. Derek Cole, spectacular last night. Ten strikeouts, went eight and a third. And another strike on Curtis Granderson. A lot of two seam. Sinking type fastballs. We'll see from AJ. This will be the hook. And he got him. Yes, sir. Strikes out Granderson to start the game, and Cervelli will throw to first to complete the punch out. And we'll bring Juan Ligares to the plate. AJ J. Burnett looking for his fourth win of the season. Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, Alfred in this case is going to be the infield. Uh, the, the whole infield is going to be Alfred because just like Alfred the Butler takes care of Batman, the infield is going to take care of AJ today. He's going to play flawless out there. Everybody's going to make the catches and uh, there's going to be some nice double plays behind him. And the blaze in the Batmobile, you saw Polanco there. And there you see the defense, 5-3. I want them to use their speed on offense today. Jay Hay, Polanco, Marte, I mean everybody. Be very aggressive on that on the basis of maybe put some uh, pressure on Harvey that way. 
Shot to Harrison right there. That Batmobile's fast, too. That's what I hear. <laughs> Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. So that way, Alfred. Out. Yep. Now, Lucas Duda. Duda was 0 for 4, struck out each of his three at bats against Garrett Cole. Strike one on Duda. Lucas Duda, the Mets fan club chance. One ball and one strike. Well, there's only one really good way to quiet him down. Yep. Bob, you had an extensive conversation with A.J. Burnett yesterday, uh, talking about this being his final year and how much fun he's having. One ball, one strike. Two and one on Duda. Uh, you know, there was a number of things really that I didn't even get a chance to get into. I mean, he, there's a, really, kind of a lot going on with him this year with, with uh, you know, being the last season and, and pitching as well as he has and, and what his attitude is like. Uh, being his last year. He, he, he really is and has the mindset of enjoying every single moment that, that he can. And I even brought up, I don't know if I remember to do it during the interview for it was off the interview, but his at bats, the way he's taking every single pitch uh, is so serious when he's hitting. Dude, I slaps a foul out of play. Yeah, you did uh, talk about that with him uh, on the air in our Radio pregame yesterday about kind of soaking it all in. And, and I and I, I asked him too off, off the air. I said, now this is really it, right? And he says, yes, absolutely. He says, I've thought about this for a couple of years. I've gone back and forth because the decision has been made. I'm, I'm not coming back after this season. Wow. What a season he's having. Two strikeouts. Batman against the Dark Knight. Matt Harvey will take the hill. There sections 332 and 333 in from uh, New York to watch Matt Harvey make his ninth start of the season. We'll check out the starting lineup for the Pirates. Brought to you by Toyota. Josh Harrison has a nine-game hitting streak, and he'll lead things off. And it's Neil Walker and Andrew McCutcheon. Starling Marte hitting cleanup. Chung Ho Gong is hit safely in five straight. He'll be followed by Pedro Alvarez, Gregory Polanco, Francisco Cervelli, and AJ Burnett. So Harvey's not going to have a happy day. But I'm sure what makes him happy is looking at that uh, that stat sheet when he gets to the ballpark. Line drive to left field. Josh Harrison starts with a base hit to left. Oh. Thinking two and puts uh, on the brakes after the wide turn. Ball heads toward foul territory. 
Duda will pick it up. Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I want. I want that aggressiveness. That would have been nice for him to push the envelope right there, but... You know, it's, uh, it's easy to make that decision when you're up here. Siciliani, the left fielder, got to it as quickly as possible, but Harrison was definitely considering it. He took the very wide turn. Yeah, he, he was... He wanted it. He was running hard from the beginning. Right now, you can see he coming out of the box going hard. He wants the double. He's going to go, and then he saw something made him change his mind, and then as it turned out, he would have been safe easy. Harrison has That's, been caught stealing three times in four attempts. That's one of those situations why it's so important for a left fielder to get a throw coming back. doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. If the runner sees the throw coming back, he can't wait to see if it's online or anything like that. He's got to make a decision whether to stop right then. A great example of that right there. Harrison took that wide turn. As soon as he saw the ball coming into the infield, he put on the brakes, and it was a bad throw by the rookie. Ten game inning streak now for Harrison. Neil Walker was 0 for 4 last night. Matt Harvey. Career high tying 16 consecutive scoreless innings going back to May the 8th in Philadelphia. Harvey pitched seven innings, a three hit shutout ball against the Chicago Cubs on the 13th of this month. And then five days ago against the Cardinals, eight innings of six hit shutout ball. With 18 strikeouts combined over those two starts. There goes Harrison. Swing and a miss. Throw down. Safe. Stolen base. It's pushing the envelope. You know, Greg, I, I think that probably wasn't even a steal. I think that was a hit and run. Just got the hand in there. It's his second steal of the season. Boy, it looked uh, like Flores tried to put his foot in front of the base. May block that hand. They won't do that if you're going feet first. They're not going to put that ankle in front of somebody's cleat. If they know you're going to go head first. They'll, they'll they'll try and push up in front of the back so keep you off of it. Slap foul. One two on Walker, who can now try and pull a pitch and move Harrison to third. Matt Harvey. About 17 months after undergoing Tommy John surgery, returned to a big league mound April the 9th of this year against the Washington Nationals and pitched six innings of four hit shutout ball. And a former first round pick out of UNC five years ago. Two balls and two strikes. London, Connecticut native, but attending the University of North Carolina. 26 year old Matt Harvey. And there, well, Harrison didn't see that the ball had gone back to the grass, so he holds three and two. I can kind of understand a little bit there that he doesn't want to get thrown at, but there's nobody out. And that's one of those cardinal sin things. You don't want to make the first out or the last out at third base. But you're right, Greg. If he knew the ball was over there, then he would have went ahead and took off. But his angle, he had to be blocked somehow. He didn't see the baseball getting over there on the grass. Full count on Neil Walker. On Josh Harrison bobblehead day. Thanks to Allegheny Health Network. Well, oh, but Matt Harvey up to the task. Keeps Harrison at second for the time being with a strike out of Walker. Walker too far out front. See the head of the bat coming through that strike zone before the ball was there. Ninth in the league in strikeouts with 57. Garrett Cole, by the way, is fourth in the National League. Opponents hitting just 213 against Matt Harvey. 
That is tied for sixth lowest in the league. Andrew McCutcheon was one for three last night and was hit by a pitch. Second career start for Harvey against Pittsburgh. His first was May 12, 2013 at City Field in New York. Point Park University tweets crawling across the bottom of your screen talking about this matchup. They call Harvey the Dark Knight, and you know by now that A.J. Burnett was known as Batman. 2-0 the count. Lagaris back toward the warning track, approaching yeah, the wall. Clear the deck! Cannonball coming! Andrew McCutcheon breaks the dark night with a two run bound. Greg, I, I, I can't hear the blue crew up there, can you? They're, they're not making much noise right now. The only noise coming from Pirate fans. That's how you quiet the other team down. Number six for McCutcheon. The fifth allowed by Harvey. I think that went all the way into the back bullpen. That was a ball. That is quiet. Yeah, not much, not much to talk about right there in that section. And the big cut by Starling Marte. That ends the string for Harvey of 16 consecutive scoreless innings thrown, and he knew yeah, he had given up a bomb. Didn't want to look at first. Oh, and two. Well, this ball got very small, very fast. And yep. All the way to the back pin. Ball going to be hit in a shallow center field. Juan Lagares, maybe the best in all of baseball. A great Inside jump on that Mike ball. Trout makes the catch. Great jump on that ball. Off the bat, I thought that was going to be a, be a problem. I knew this was going to be a problem. And Koch went into that that jog. He he, he knows he gets out as good as he can. Well, well over 400 feet, and a great look again from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. and hit one last night that sent Lagares to the wall. This ball bounced to third. And Gunn is retired, but the Pirates strike first.
brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. 2-0 Pirates. Matt Harvey gives up the home run to Andrew McCutcheon. Some 441 feet. The estimated distance of McCutcheon's home run is sixth of the year. 62nd home run all-time at PNC Park. Now he stands alone as the all-time home run king here in this ballpark. Barrel Automotive League leader since 2012. Andrew McCutcheon has the most hits in the National League. Daniel Murphy second on that list. And as Murphy steps in against A.J. Burnett. One ball, no strikes. That'll be out of play. Last night, Murphy won for three in a rare strikeout. He's the second toughest in the National League to strike out, having punched out only 13 times and 154 at bats. And that's driven deep to right. Just missed getting out of here. And it was hit so hard. And Polanco did such a fabulous job taking that ball off the wall. It's a single off the top of the Clemente wall. I think uh, maybe. I thought they were going to take a look at that. You can almost hear it hit off that fence. Oh, it definitely hit off the fence, but I thought for a moment when the the umpires were calling timeout. It looked like they were, might want to look at it. But that was a great job by Polanco. Standing on the grass, he didn't get in next to the fence. He knows that you got to wait and see what kind of bounce you're going to get. And how about the throw in the second base? Yeah. Didn't matter because Murphy had already stopped. Wow. Ball was hit hard. And listen again, hit off the fence. Running hard too. Yeah. He wasn't uh, jogging down there thinking he had a home run. He, he was held to a single just with good defense. Daniel Murphy, the base hit off the wall. Wilmer Flores, the shortstop at the plate. Check swing bouncer. It works like a punt. Murphy into scoring position. That brings up the third baseman Eric Campbell. 38 year old A.J. Burnett is making his 413th career start this afternoon. That earned run average of 138, second lowest behind only Shelby Miller of the Atlanta Braves. Very aggressive lead over at second by Daniel Murphy. And this is when you have to watch him one out. He was wanting to run. Lost his nerve after a little shuffle there. He decided not to. So Ho Gong was all over the bases last night. Walked into third base on a steal. So it's up to Walker to hold it close. Gunks. Flying way over. And bounce toward third. Back to second. There's Murphy and a throw to first base by Harrison retires Campbell. College students save up to $10 on tickets to all Sunday through Friday games here at PNC Park. All students with a valid college email address can save big on tickets in the outfield or grandstand. To purchase your tickets, visit pirates.com slash student. Under at second, two outs. Murphy still there. Darnell Siciliani is at the plate. His big league debut as a pinch hitter the other day against the Cardinals. Just called up. Full 
calls it foul. And now Burnett out in front of the rookie. Nice play on the line. 0 and 2. Hard hit ball. Beautiful shot. A spectacular day. I gotta believe the uh, the folks from New York are impressed right yeah. now. Can't imagine the prettier ballpark to play a game of baseball in than this one this afternoon. Marcos wanted that one, didn't get it from the home plate umpire, Mike Michlinski. Room. Get a behind the scenes look at the team's playoff series against the Rangers, highlighted by Max Lapierre's mic'd up for the Pens game two win. In the room tonight at 8.30 on Root Sports. Well, if you're not inside this ballpark, you might be on the Allegheny just outside PNC Park. Maybe watching from right there as Pedro Alvarez, who Hit the ball in the boat the other night. Third player in the history of this ballpark. And there's a oh, ball yeah. right field. Pedro Alvarez has done it again. The big ball with a big bomb. Three nothing Pirates. Hands off the back fence. He's getting one of those uh, little streaks, don't you think? I think so. Feeling confident, eight home runs now on the season for Alvarez. He's always been streaky when it comes to home runs, and it sure looks like you know, one of those times where he might hit four or five here in the next ten days. Second time this season that Harvey has given up two homers in a game. He did it April the 14th against the Phillies. Tried to run that fastball by him on the inside half. No luck. Well, 
when Pedro does hit him, you, very seldom do you have to wonder, is that going to get out? Yeah. He, he hits them a long ways when he gets one. Well, yeah, the only question you're going to have is, is it going to head toward the river? Yeah, is it going to be out of the stadium yeah. or not is a, a real question. Blanco goes down on a 97 mile an hour heater. Looked like it was elevated a little bit. But, uh, back row. Treated to the Alvarez home run. Harvey has never given up more than two home runs in a ball game. Francisco Cervelli still looking for his first Pirate homer. That's this ball to third. Campbell. Two outs. Has two hits and 15 at bats this season. Let's go, Batman. Show us something. 97 0 and 2. It looks like he's setting him up, taking the balls right down the middle. What do you think? I don't think so. All All right. strikes. Doesn't matter. Go pitch now. Pedro Alvarez makes it a 3 0 ball game with his eighth home run of the season. A blast. Measured at 423 feet. Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Equinox and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! Day Automotive this day in Pirates history. This day, 1984, Buckos beat the Reds 7 2. On the back of some good pitching by the Candyman, who goes eight innings, strikes out 12, his fourth win of the year. Bucks score six in the fifth. Home run by Lee Mazzilli, RBI singles by Bill Madlock, Jason Thompson, Tony Pena, and Johnny Ray. This date in 1984. Pedro Alvarez's home run makes it 3 0. Here is the rookie catcher, Kevin Ploecki, batting 211, 76 at bats, filling in for the injured starting catcher, Travis Darno. That uh, section of rooting fans they have out there, the blue, they have one fan up there for every member of their team that's on the DL. 
And that's disabled less to the Mets. It's it is ridiculous. Amazingly long. And how they have been able to hold the fort as long as they have. Really a testament to Terry Collins, just an underrated baseball man. Fifth year as skipper. If 12, 12 players, which is half of a big league roster, is on the disabled list already, it's just May. Of course, their face of the franchise, David Wright, has been out for a while. They don't know when he'll get back. Their all star third baseman, their franchise player, their closer is out. A handful of other relievers. We mentioned their starting catcher, Travis Darno. Three and two the count. Burnett with three strikeouts so far today is now tied with Louis Tiant for 39th on the all time strikeout list. That's players on the disabled list. A dozen. Including David Wright, Dylan G. One of their starters. Set up man, Victor Black. Starter Zach Wheeler, Bobby Parnell going to be part of the bullpen. Josh Edgen, one of the relief pitchers, the left-handed setup man, specialist, and a strike three call. Milwaukee's reaction as he barks at Mike Pichlinski. You're a rookie, and that's Batman. He gets those pitches. That's right. Talk about David Wright, our Allegheny Health Network injury update. Out with the hamstring injury. Shut down from baseball activities for at least the next seven days. They just don't know when he'll come back. And Matt Harvey with one hit in 16 at bats. Chop toward the shortstop. Gone. Two outs. Well, we said before the strike out of Ploiecki that A.J. Burnett had matched Louis Tiant for 39th all time. Well, now he's all there by himself. Next up on the list, Jamie Moyer. And I know that's one of the things he mentioned to you yesterday, Bob, that uh, he, from the back of his mind, he thought about 3,000, but knows that this is going to be his last year. So he just thinks about. Climbing the list. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, most guys won't admit to that either. You know, you ask them, they, oh, that's, you know, after the season or something, you know, when you ask about the personal goals. But being his last year, it is, he was very honest. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. And it's nice to see those names. And I brought up Koufax and, and I could kind of see something, uh, you know, in him when I, and, and you'd have to think of that when, when you're with the, some of the Giants of the game, or in this case, a Dodger, then. You've got to be so proud of that to, to be mentioned in, with those same legends, guys like Sandy Koufax, Luis Tion. Just foul. Uh, we've talked about this before. You look, I mean, you mentioned just a couple of those names, but you just look at the top 50 all time strikeout leaders. I guess the top 50 of anything in Major League Baseball history is impressive, oh, yeah, no matter what the category. Sure. No, I mean, but how long is the game yeah. going on, though? Way, way over a century. So, yeah, that's special. Top 50. And just littered with Hall of Famers. And now we're talking A.J. Burnett, the top 39 all time. He continues to climb the list. Jamie Moyer next. Andy Pettit will follow. Then Sam McDowell, Jim Cott, Jack Morris is up there. Don Drysdale, Christy Mathewson. I mean, the all time greats. Three and two on Granderson. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, if he really wanted to, he could get 3,000. The way he's pitching right now, he could come back another year, a couple years maybe, and he would be there. 
but struck him out looking. Wow. He struck out five on Josh Harrison bobblehead day and Jay Hay will lead off in the bottom of the third. New York Mets, I'm Robbie Antsmikowski. Josh Harrison's story from fringe major leaguer to major league all-star is a very inspirational one, and he's going to share his story and also have a chance to play with uh, kids first to eighth grade, a chance to learn directly from Jay Hay. He will host his first ever pro camp June 24th at North Allegheny Intermediate School in Pittsburgh from 9 until 1230. Camp is open to anyone, grades 1 to 8. It's a chance okay. to learn fundamental baseball skills from one of the best fundamentally sound players in all of baseball and a chance to hang out with Jay Hay. There's a website. JoshHarrisonCamp.com cost 99 bucks. Is there any guy, anybody better, Greg, in the business to interact with than Josh uh, I Harrison? I don't think so, Robbie. And you've been around this business a long time, and uh, as good a person as you'll find, and wanting to to give back to the kids, and it'll be a great day. Oh, this will be a routine play. As Harrison is retired, he extended his hitting streak to 10 straight games with his single in the first. And he was aboard when Andrew McCutcheon went deep. Harrison's batting average has just shot up in the last week and a half. Neil Walker struck out in the first against Matt Harvey. And at the time, looked like a big strikeout. Wasn't able to move Jay Hay to third base with uh, with nobody out, but Kutch took care of that. Moved uh, moved him not only to third but all the way to the dugout. Fly ball to center. Two down. And here comes Andrew McCutcheon, that home run is sixth of the season. First inning into the back bullpen. McCutcheon hit his fifth home run of the season on Wednesday night against the Twins. Number six on the year, and as we said earlier, 62nd all time, 62nd home run here, most ever. He had been in a tie with Jason Bay. Granderson and almost ran out of room, stayed with it, made the catch, and the Pirates go down in order. Three nothing through three.
UPMC scoreboard. Scoreboard showing you the Pirates are leading three to nothing and a happy, happy Pirates fan with her Jay Hay bobblehead. Now Burnett has punched out five. This is Juan Ligaris. The center fielder bounced to Harrison in the first inning. Uh, Bob, do you, do you have any uh, any idea how Burnett has really turned not his career around? He's winding down a career, but going back to last season, he had a decent start for the Philadelphia Phillies. But I mean, his control numbers are so good this year. Well, I think he's this season fully embraced. The two seam fastball to the point to where he's not trying to find the missing velocity. It's not bothering him. Um, in the interview that uh, we had yesterday on the radio, he was talking about uh, a couple of times about the hard throwers that we were going to see this series. You know, Cole and, and of course Harvey today, and, and about you know the young guys want to. Throw the four seamer. They're always looking for velocity. He did when he was older. He was a high 90s type guy when he was young. But he says now he goes. I, I wish I would have, you know, maybe threw more two seamers back then. Not worried so much about getting strikeouts and tried to be a little more e efficient. And I think that that might be, you know, what's happening. I think last year he could probably feel that velocity slipping away from him because when he was with us. The first couple of years, he was still throwing the ball up there, 94, 95. Uh, at times, on a good night, you'd even see him hit 96. But he doesn't do that now. Now it's all 91, 92. Because he's not trying to throw the ball hard. And I think that's helped his control. And I don't know if that's the complete answer. I think maybe being back with Ray Sarich uh, has something to do with that. Because it seems like Ray always gets the guys throwing strikes, uh, no matter who they are. But if I had to put my finger on one thing, and, and that's what he liked to talk about, was the fact that he's thrown way more two seam fastballs. Well, that found the hole between Alvarez and Walker, and there was not much room there, but hit hard by Lucas Duda. Yeah, a couple of ground balls uh, hit hard through the holes. I mean, that's one of the things that happens when you're getting the, the two seamer. It's going to be put in play, pitch into contact. But the ground balls don't go over the fence very often. That actually had a little velocity to it, 93. Not where it used to be, though. Now it's first and third with nobody out. Burnett has had this pretty incredible string going at the start of this season, having allowed two runs or less in each of his first eight starts. No Pirates since at least 1900 had ever done that. Of course, Bob matched that mark through first seven starts. Bob Walk had uh, not given up more than two runs in any of his first seven starts in 1988. That's something you have to be you have to be thinking about as the time goes on, don't you? As each start, do you remember back in '88 when you had that <laughs> string going? No, each I had no idea until really. Well, you were with me the other day in the elevator. Yeah, I thought you were kidding. No, I had no idea. I wasn't kidding at all. That's First, I'd ever heard of it. Chopped toward Alvarez. He guns it to second. The run will score. It's three to one. But a good sign, to be honest with you, that Alvarez just threw a strike to Gong. Well, there's something on it, too. Good, quick, hard throw right there. <laughs> kind of thought Gong would maybe uh, take a shot at first base. He got such a good throw, but he definitely just played it as a first baseman that it took one out. Did not make the attempt to turn it over. Three one ball game. Romer Flores a check swing bouncer to Harrison in the second. One and 
one. Savelli the block. Flores, the team leader in home runs with six. Burnett, no stranger to these New York Mets. He's making his 25th career start versus New York. Five and nine, 418 lifetime ERA. Made four starts with the Phillies last year against these Mets and was 0 and 3. And Flores was five for six last year against AJ Burnett. Ground ball headed up the middle and a base hit. Four ground balls in the inning. A run in and three hits. And uh, nothing that AJ can do any differently. He's just got to keep pitching his uh, game, working the two seamers and the curveball, and keep getting the ground balls. There'll be one hit right at somebody for a double play. Campbell bounced to Josh Harrison in the second inning. Two and zero. Oh. Campbell is overdue. Oh, for his last 16 at bats. And they've gotten loud again out there. Yeah, Sections 332 and 333. I got uh, some ground ball base hits to cheer for. And the count now goes to 3 and 0. You see any Pirate fan? Yes. Right in the middle of it all. Hmm. See a blue. All right, here's the fastball away that Campbell tries to pull. So he rolls over on it, puts it on the ground to come. Double play. There it is. Right there. Three and two. It wasn't supposed to swing a mess. He was supposed to hit that to short. Now it might not happen now because he's going to be a little defensive. He just swung and missed uh, on a fastball. So now he won't be so aggressive. To second base, four, six, three, double play. That's the way. AJ Burnett gets Campbell to bounce into the inning ending twin killing and they're quiet again.
Pirates up three to one. Those ground balls in the fourth inning produced one run, but this produced our Chick fil A double play. Walker to Gong to Alvarez. Eric Campbell getting it right to Neil Walker, erasing Flores at the start. And A.J. Burnett reacts. Like that good infield play. I was going to ask you about that, Bob, because I know that the Phillies didn't shift nearly as much as the Pirates. And uh, I think A.J. has kind of come to, has grown to like it. <laughs> Marte tries to punt for a hit but doesn't get it out past the dirt, so he's retired by Ploiecki. Let's go to Paul Alexander back to the studio for a State Farm game break. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Garrett Jones, two thirds of an inning, one walk. No run. CC Sabathia gave up six and two and a third. His ERA is 5.47. He's two and six, and the New York Yankees have lost five in a row and nine of their last 11 games. They got off to such a good start in the month of April, but have fallen on hard times. The Mets for a while were in first place, but. The red hot Washington Nationals who've won six in a row lead the East by a game and a half over the New York Mets. And Don lines this into center field. A six game hitting streak for Gong. Well, as long as Gong just keeps getting these hits. It's becoming a bigger and, and more important part of this offense. Well, it's his eighth straight start, and in five of the last six starts, he has been at shortstop. So Jordy Mercer uh, losing some playing time to Gung for now. Well, Mercer's the uh, the one right now that's struggling with that bat. So he's the odd man out. But with the Jay Hayes versatility, I mean, you could put a lot of different combinations out there. If, say, Mercer gets hot, starts hitting, it doesn't always have to just be that left side of the infield that uh, you're, you're talking about with those three guys. A lot of options, a lot of different combinations you can go with putting, uh, putting together the infield or putting together the lineup. I mean, more Point Park University tweets. Power displayed by McCutcheon in the first and Alvarez in the second. Line drive right field and that's fair and heading toward the corner. Jung Ho Gong heads to third. Rick Sofield going to wave him home. Here comes the throw toward the plate. Gong is safe and the Pirates take a 4 1 lead. Being aggressive on those bases, normally you don't really. Uh, uh, you know, do something like that unless there's two outs. He's already at third with one out. But saw that the uh, the ball wasn't coming in very quickly and kept the windmill going. Got that run back right away. A low changeup, perhaps. Gung. Gung, uh, not the fleetest of foot, but he is a you baseball know, player. He made a nice turnaround. Yeah. Didn't get very far out of the grass hardly at all. Yep. And that, you know, little things like exactly. that make up for maybe not, well, maybe being a half step slower than somebody else. You pick up that half step that you might be slower than somebody else by making the good turns going around the bases. He's a smart baseball player. I like the one that the turn he made around third that that got him uh, a lot of ground there and and made the play at home really no tack. 
If he takes a wide turn coming around third, there's going to be a play at the plate. Alvarez with a couple of ribbies. That's a score I thought we'd see in the fourth inning. No, four to one. No. And with one out, Polanco, a chance here. Two and one. A three one count. Harvey has only walked seven unintentionally all season. Talking 58 innings. The camera. Almost got a piece of Polanco and Alvarez takes off for third and it's first and third. Real good heads up baseball by Pedro just one out he's taking advantage of that ball gets away he's thinking move up if it's in the dirt. You have to anticipate this happening so you get that good jump. Your secondary lead. I mean, this ball doesn't go far at all. It's just laying right there. Doesn't even make it to the grass. But Pedro, with a good anticipation, you saw the secondary lead. A little bit of a, a, a jump there and was gone. And there's there's no play. Nine times out of ten, the catcher doesn't even make a throw. You get a good jump when that ball's in the dirt. Now Harvey has to concern himself with Polanco who's third in the league with 12 steals caught twice. Josh Harrison swiped second base earlier in the ball game. Wow. Hey, we'd love to see Polanco get into second base. Take away that double play option. On the other hand, you wouldn't want to see him get thrown out. <laughs> There's always a risk. Two strikes on Cervelli. The dark night. AJ looks more like Batman than Harvey does. Yeah, Harvey just it doesn't fit. No. Maybe he need, needs the mask. Maybe that's missing. Dent was what was he the prosecutor the DA and that uh, I think the I it was the second to last Batman well, this is Matt Harvey the Pirates putting a dent in his ERA they have scored four already and looking for at least one more here as Harvey looks for a double play ball from Cervelli to get out of it There goes Polanco, and there will be no throw there. Campus. Ball's in the dirt. Runner gets a good jump. You got to eat it. The guy that proved it to me you know, it was Jack Wilson. Yeah. I mean, I, I no, nobody was better. No, the, the ball would bounce and it would lay right in front of the catcher, and he'd get into second base without a throw every time. There's nobody better. And then I thought to myself, what? Why doesn't everybody yeah. do that? Because not like Jack was some great speedster, right. but he just had that anticipation, and he knew if the ball was in the dirt and it was going to be blocked, if he got a good jump, they weren't going to throw him out. They never did. Now time is called Plawecki out. He'll be joined by the middle infielders. Infield has come in with one out. 
And two men in scoring position. This is a big at bat for Cervelli, for Matt Harvey. If can get one past the infield, the Pirates can score a pair. And a huge gap in left center field for Cervelli. Lagares plays a shallow center. He's well off toward right center field. Three and two and a block by Ploiecki saves a run for now. Everybody's moved up as far as I can on those blocks. <laughs> Nothing happening on that one. Getting clogged up out there. There's nowhere for anyone to go. in there. Two wild pitches uncorked in the inning. Harvey allowed one wild pitch all season coming into this game and had two all of 2013 his all star year last season before undergoing Tommy John surgery he missed all of 2014. So another three two pitch. And a walk to Cervelli to load them up with one out. Bob, you don't want Burnett to hit it with a double play. No, right? no. And you, know, so you tell him just to put the bat on his shoulder and just take it. I mean, that's an option, but I, I don't, I don't know. I think you have to let him swing. Uh, Why? With the, with the you, risk you here, just, just go up and strike you, out. Why not? The risk is the double play, or maybe he knocks in two runs with a base uh, hit. What are the chances of that? What's he got a better chance of doing here? A uh, better chance of it's probably striking out. He, wanted, he was trying to get a grand You're going to tell Batman he go up and strike out? No, you don't. Batman, it's, just, it's for the that's, good. That's it's for the good of Gotham. That's bad karma, Greg. Batman, bad karma. Batman, it's for the good of Gotham. Bad karma. Listen to us, Batman. Just don't, you know, swing the bat. Just don't hit a grounder. He took his swing. Drive it hard to the outfield. Now just take it. Drive it hard to the outfield. How about butt for base hit? Could do that. Yeah, there you go. It's all right. So uh, now if you're Harvey, what are you trying to do? You know you, you got a strikeout pitch here you can use. I mean, you're, you're Harvey. Yeah. Do you throw it or you try and throw something you think he might get a ground ball on? That's a great question. If you strike him out, you get to face yeah. Harrison with the base right. loaded. In the air center, Lagares is going to try and get a throw off. Oh, Alvarez will tag. The throw is going to be offline. Yeah. And the Pirates yeah. take a 5 1 lead on the sacrifice fly by A.J. Burnett. Batman. That's, That's his second right RBI of the season. Watch AJ Burnett react. Sack fly, 5 1 lead. That's why you swing away. It's a dangerous <laughs> thing, that flying bat. And now Josh Harrison with runners at second and third. Savelli advanced. You know another really interesting thing about about AJ, and I you can see it there in his reaction. Coming into this series, if you said to AJ, "We can tell the Mets to pitch anybody they want against you. Who do you want? Who do you think he'd take?" Yeah. Well, he'd say, give any me, doubt. Yeah. Give me Harvey. Absolutely. I want the best. And then, so that's. Yeah. You can see his reaction. This is. This is what he, the kind of stuff that he is going to miss when he retires. Games like this. Going up against the other team's best. Check swing. Nope. Nope. Matt Harvey 
has never given up more than five runs in any start and this is his 45th career start last time he gave up five go back to July 3rd 2013 when he gave up five runs against the Diamondbacks in six innings of work and this will be a 60th pitch of the game to right hand fair ball this is going to score two Josh Harrison doubles it's a dark day for the dark night as the Pirates lead seven to one Cervelli score on the liner to right. You know, and Harvey was really reaching back at this point. The last couple fastballs were 97. He knows he's on the ropes. He's trying to fight his way off. And Harrison just wouldn't give him any room to breathe. Josh Harris a little high stepping into second. Two more hits for Josh Harrison. Just absolutely on fire. Dan Worth and the pitching coach goes out and a stunner here for the Mets and their fans as Terry Collins is forced to call the bullpen to get somebody up. Career high, seven runs allowed by Matt Harvey. Maybe eight. <laughs> Jay standing out at second. Unhappy folks in the upper deck. Plenty of good food and drink here at PNC Park, so they're going to enjoy the food. Yeah. They're, they're not sure. Really liking the game right now. They'll still enjoy their day, no doubt. Myers went up. Keep pressing the pedal. You really do want to get to this bullpen with all the injuries. They have four rookie relievers. Of the seven men in the bullpen available for Terry Collins, four of them are rookies. And he is not Carlos Torres. Hit hard but foul. Another nice play down there. Blister. Yep. A couple of them. This will be the thirty second pitch of this inning for Matt Harvey. Two and two on Walker. He's the eighth man to hit in the inning. This inning started, remember, with the Sterling Marte trying to bunt for a hit. The first or second pitch of the fourth inning. And then Jung Ho Gung got it going. 16 consecutive innings coming into this game didn't allow a run. Gets Walker. And that will end a long bottom of the fourth inning. Pirates strike. For four.
beautiful images from the Allegheny Health Network Supermo. And Matt Harvey do up third. And the top of this fifth inning getting knocked around by the Pirates. Seven runs. Josh Harrison had the double that plated a pair. AJ Burnett sacrifice fly with the bases loaded. Chung Ho Gung got it going. And this ball first pitch swinging. Pop up. Boy, for AJ, you got to love that. Thank you. Mets come out to down by six runs and swinging at the first pitch. You know, I don't know, Greg, really how much uh, guys pay attention to that anymore, though, to be honest with you. You just don't see uh, you know teams well, get down, start taking a strike. I, I'm guessing that. I know Siciliano did not the rookie, but I bet you if Curtis Granderson were coming to the plate, there's no way he'd have swung at the first pitch. But he's a veteran. Oh. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been there, but in a ball they used to tell you that. But it, I mean, it should not be a veteran veteran thing. Right. It shouldn't have to be in the league five six mm -hmm. years before you know you don't swing at the first pitch when you're down by six runs. But like I said, I think the game has changed and that not a lot of emphasis is put on that sort of thing. So on deck was John Mayberry Jr. to pinch hit for Matt Harvey. Going to be the shortest outing of Matt Harvey's career. Before today, he had never gone fewer than five innings. Carlos Torres is going to be the new pitcher. Happens to the best of them. Strike three call. Talk about the best of them. AJ Burnett in his sixth strikeout. Climbing the list. Say is next, Jamie Moyer. Yes. Look, Jamie. Tell it was 55 to get that last. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, the Phillies taking it to the Nationals, lead seven nothing. The uh, Nats, one of the, the Phillies, the one of the teams that uh, Moyer pitched for over the years. Steven Strasburg gave up six runs, five earned, and three and two thirds innings, and his earned run average is now 650. Steven Strasburg. Cole Hamels on the mound for the Phillies today. Two and one on the pinch hitter, John Mayberry Jr. Strikes on him. Struck him out. Back to back K's. One, two, three. That's seven strikeouts. And he and the Pirates sizzling. 7 1 Pittsburgh.
Andrew McCutcheon brought the lumber in the first inning with a man on and one out into the back Pirates bullpen for their sixth home run of the season, giving the Pirates the early lead off of Matt Harvey. Andrew Alvarez would add a home run. It came in the second, and the Pirates with a four spot in the fourth, and McCutcheon will lead things off here in the fifth. Greg, is there anything missing from this game? Yeah, McCutcheon going deep. Uh, Jay Hay doing his thing. Big doubles. Alvarez a uh, oh. couple of extra base hits. Oh, did bow all the way to the Pedro. Yeah. And then uh, AJ just saw the strikeouts, sack fly, out pitching Harvey. I mean, everything that a a Pirate fan would love to see coming to the ballpark. It's been here, and it's only the halfway point. You got a nice bobblehead today. It was just the start of the day. Beautiful afternoon. Yeah. yeah, the weather. One and two. Carlos Torres facing Andrew McCutcheon, Starling Marte, Jung Ho Gong. Torres in his third season with the Mets. That, that, that's a rather small boat for a big flag. Oh, there's a liner to center field. Two hits for Andrew McCutcheon. Marte has flied out and tried to bunt for a hit. Had his seven game hitting streak snapped last night. And goes the other way. Stay fair. Anderson back. Foul. A little slicer. Trying to uh, hit behind the runner, they're going to shoot one in the right field. Bob Lowe, the Mets fans have had enough. Yep. Heading back to the hotel. It was not a happy Harvey day. I don't know where the <laughs> sign is now. I see the island. <laughs> Two. Oh, Marte busting it down the line. He will not only reach first, but he's headed to second base. And out at second base. Marte looked back toward Duda. And the second baseman Murphy with a bit of a deke and a quick tag on Marte. You know, the weirdest thing about that is that Duda threw that ball to second base. Remember last yeah, night? Didn't throw it. And, and, and who's he throw yeah. it on? Marte. He throws Marte out. Similar play last night with the uh, with Gun running. Duda just held the ball. Wow. That was an awfully close play at second. Duda got the uh, rebound, made a nice quick throw. Young, one for two. Into the shortstop, Flores. Pirates up by six.
Boot Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! Moving along here to inning number six. And it's Curtis Granderson who takes strike one. A.J. Burnett has fanned seven. He's gotten Granderson twice. And 0 and 2 the count. Great Memorial Day weekend. Another game tomorrow afternoon here. And then Memorial Day, the Pirates will play the Marlins on Monday night. Start a three game series. Granderson is hit by the 0 2 offering. AJ won't be happy with himself on that one. It's the look of disgust on his face. Really tried to bury a curveball to get that. Uh, <laughs> says, get out of the way, man. He's supposed to jump over that pitch. Yeah, they were teammates with the Yankees for a time. He's really trying to snap off this hook. And he did, but right down at the ground. Curveball is a little bit of a touch pitch. And if you, you try to overcook it, it's not going to make it anywhere close to the plate. And just hit the dirt. Magaris one for two. Different kind of start time here at four o'clock. Uh, going to have to deal with some sun issues, shadows, stuff creeping up on the field. Not this badly. Two and one. Normally at this hour, there's batting practice going on. Sun's going to get low out in the west, and the outfielders are going to have a, a tougher time with it as you get in the last couple innings of this game. The other way, and right to Polanco. He runs toward first, but Granderson back. Polanco's making some good throws <laughs> hitting from the outfield today. Granderson only went about three steps. He would have taken a fourth. He'd have probably been out. He's one of the great guys right there, Curtis Granderson. Great human being. Veteran, former Tiger, Yankee, North of Mets. Good foul. Lucas Duda, one for two. One ball and one strike. I'm talking to Terry Collins yesterday about Curtis Granderson, and he confirms. One of the greatest players, if not the greatest human beings he's ever managed over the many years. He pointed out that Granderson donated five million dollars to his alma mater, the University of Illinois, Illinois at uh, Chicago, for Granderson Stadium. Five million dollars. Didn't have to do it. Out in the community all the time. Great presence in the clubhouse. Always buying meals for the players. And one of the best. Well, he went around, says the home plate umpire. And Duda can't believe it. Granderson winds up at second base. 
fighters always wonder why don't you? They always want to appeal, but once the plate umpire makes the call, oh that that hit him. But he leg. swung at it. So he's a strikeout. Doesn't matter if it hit him, right? Swung no, no. If he's if, ball. he's if he swung at it, then he's got to uh, go back to first, yeah. doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Clint Hurdle saying, "Hey, get him back to first. Yeah. I, I don't think that Clint knew. I think somebody probably just called down and said, "Hey, that ball hit him in the leg." Because I think they just thought it was a wild pitch. Going to confer again, and uh, the riddle might ask them to look at this here. Well, I mean it. Well, I mean, we thought it was obvious that it was not a a, a wild yeah, pitch; that it was a swing and a miss at a ball that hit him. So hurdle going to the umpires, and they're going to they're going to take a look. Now you can challenge a batter being hit by a pitch. And he was hit by the pitch. Right there. Bounced right off his ankle. Shouldn't take long at all. No. Mike Michlinski is the home plate umpire and the crew chief is Mike Winters. Kind of surprised it's taking this long. Ball hit him in the leg. Yeah. He's going to back to first. He got it right after the challenge. That's the eighth strikeout for A.J. Burnett. And they'll send Granderson back to first. <laughs> A.J. right now is thinking, boy, this is a crazy game now. All these changes. And back when I started, <laughs> they didn't have replay. Yeah. <laughs> Foul by Murphy, who's one for two. Now, Bob, I know you talked to AJ yesterday, and he says, absolutely, this is his last year. But if he keeps pitching like this, and they have Cy Young talk for this guy, and he leads the team to a maybe a division title, could you see him walking away from this? After talking to him yesterday, no. I, I, I mean, I can't see him coming back. He was. You know, basically, he said, I've been thinking about this for a couple of years. I've been wanting to quit before. I want to retire, and I've made my decision, and I'm going to retire. So, and, and obviously, before I had talked to him, I said, he, you know, I pointed out to him, and like, like I needed to, that he, he's, you're pitching so well. But I just don't think that that matters a whole lot to him. I mean, I think it's going to, he's going to, Really take pleasure in retiring after a strong, great year. Now that is a fair ball just past Alvarez, kicks off the fence. So Murphy, a line shot past first. Granderson winds up at third, second hit of the day for Daniel Murphy. Now that uh, reversal of the call saved AJ a run to this point. Able to turn on that fastball inside. So that's kind of a little bit of a difference right there in AJ's game. That 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 fastball at 91 back in the days when he was throwing 95, 96, like a Cole or a Harvey, nobody turns on that ball when it sits right there. But at 91, Murphy can turn on it, get the head of the bat to it. Ball one on Flores. I mean, I guess it's it's possible that he would change his mind, but he certainly is 
his, his mindset right now today. There's no way that's not going to happen. He's never made an all star team. He could go to his first all star game this year. Back to Burnett. AJ Burnett is doing it again. Pedro Alvarez has been a game changer today. This long home run back to that Pedro and this line double. Two RBIs, two runs scored. And for the first time since August 23rd of last year, he has two extra base hits in the ball game. UPMC scoreboard, Pirates up 7-1. I know they're happy out in the left field loony section, the bleachers, and you know, the a wedding party out there. Kevin Pistorius and Nicole Pucci. They just threw the bouquet, see? Yeah. Wedding tomorrow, we understand. How about that? Flowers are flying. Tejada takes over as the shortstop. The new pitcher is Jack Leathersich. One of the rookies we talked about. Not a whole lot there yet, just four and two thirds innings. A little wild, three walks. Those four and two thirds innings. Don't take your foot off the accelerators. Keep going. A great afternoon. See how tough it is on the hitters. 
And the new shortstop Tejada, nice sliding stop, and gets to his feet and quickly throws out Pedro Alvarez. That's the first out. Here at the bottom of the sixth inning. I want to send along a happy birthday wish. Charlie Morton's son, Charles Alfred V, is two years old today. He's there with uh, his sister Grace in that photo. So happy birthday to his boy Cam. They call him Cam, Charles Alfred Morton. Going along with the bat, the Batman yeah. theme. Talk about uh, Alfred. It just keeps going, the theme. Charlie's Moving middle along. name. And uh, how about a happy birthday wish? Jake Walk, uh, birthday party today, right? For your grandson? Oh, yes. Jake turns one. All right. So I know now Jake. Gonna, are you going to be able I, to catch Jake, catch I know you're watching yeah, at home. Yeah, Happy guarantee. birthday. Are you going to be able to catch a little bit of the party later? Uh, I'm not I think sure. it's wrapping yeah. up. Oh. Yeah. It'll probably be. Well, happy birthday, Jake. I think they're right in the middle of it right now. So the cake, you know, the, it's one. They smash it all up. Pushes it in his face, all that stuff. Jake Walk, Marte Parte, huh? <laughs> Gregory Polanco, it was interesting to hear Clint Hurdle talking yesterday about uh, trying to get him going again, and the thought is that would really start to turn it on uh, when he would face left handers Bob that uh, he was able to hang in there in the minor leagues and then hurdle said I'm going to have him in this ball game today if they bring in a left hander going to keep him uh, in there not lift him from the ball game and tomorrow Jonathan Nice a left hander will start and he plans on having Polanco in the, the lineup hoping to get him out of his little funk here well, he's got that natural talent together Keep the faith, get it going. Make it a family day tomorrow. All kids 14 and younger get a Garrett Cole replica camo jersey courtesy of Chevrolet. Pirates Mets 135. Number one Cochran family fun zone on Federal Street before the game and after the game. Kids can run the bases. Compliments to the original pizza logs. For tickets, go to pirates.com. Garrett Cole camo jerseys to the kids tomorrow. And again, the lefty Jonathan Neese starts for New York against. Pirates lefty Francisco Liriano. You know when uh, when AJ leaves the parking garage later on this afternoon, and the that the door goes yep. up, it's going to be like coming out of the Batcave. <laughs> it is. It's going to be all dark. The fans out it's there be, be dark. dark. Yep. Yeah. It will be kind of cool for everybody. And a line drive base hit for Cervelli. And well, AJ Burnett will come to the plate. Boy, this has got to be a pretty good ovation, you would think. Pitcher. This is not late enough in the game yet. Decent hands. Sure. Nothing special. Polite. Yeah. It's only the bottom of the six. I, guess they, I don't think he's going to probably won't hit again. Uh -huh. Well, I was, I was wondering how efficient he's been. Uh, he's at 84 pitches, but how about that? How about if he zips through the lineup and then Clint Hurdle's faced with another decision? Yeah, like last <laughs> back to back night. starts. What did it send his starter out for the night? But actually, it's gotten to the point with the day off on. Uh, Thursday and with Cole going eight and a third, I'm sure Clint Hurdle would, as weird as it sounds, would like to use maybe a couple of his pitchers. It's that delicate balance. I'd like to give them rest, but not too much rest. Keep them sharp. Line to left field for AJ Burnett. Take that, DH lovers. AJ Burnett has a sacrifice fly and he rips the single to left. I don't know, Greg. Maybe he will keep playing. <laughs> Maybe he'll go to the American League at DH. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Rips this one. 
third hit of the season for Burnett. Two on, two outs. And now Josh Harrison. Very late swing and a miss. Hey, hey, two for three. Pirates have collected nine hits and chased. Matt Harvey after four innings his shortest start of his career. Andrew McCutcheon first inning home run. And the base hit of Carlos Torres in the fifth. There's those shadows that are creeping in now and becomes a problem for the hitters. We talk about this in certain stadiums that has this issue at this time of the afternoon. You're looking out in this bright sunlight and your eyes are now adjusting to that. And then halfway to the plate, the ball goes into the shadow. And because your eyes have, are, are adjusted to the you know all the bright, the hitting back around the city in the back, all of that, it's just hard to pick up the ball once it hits the shadow. Reaches out, pokes it off the side of the mound and Second baseman Murphy will step on the bag for the final out. Pirates leave a couple onto the seventh inning. Pirates up 7 1. PMC scoreboard 7 1 Pirates lead. Head to the seventh. <laughs> That's a scary pirate. It is. That's a scary pirate. Eric Campbell. How about the shirts that they gave out yesterday? How popular are those oh, right now? AJ Burnett designed t shirts. Two Bucko fans wearing them right now. And a couple of strikes on Eric Campbell. You think uh, that this would be it for Burnett, regardless? This inning? Yeah.
Let's say he's in the high 90s. Yeah, why not? I mean, why push it? It's not like he's throwing a shutout. You know, yeah. he didn't have that at, at stake. And got the comfortable lead. You know, let him uh, save uh, a little ammunition for the next day. We'd love to see I mean, him. He is 38. <laughs> right? That's right. Two and two. We'd love to see him put up a zero here. His uh, earn run average at this moment is 140. And Shelby Miller, who had the ERA lead coming into today's action, has given up a couple of runs. And there's another strikeout for Burnett. That's number nine. One trying to protect that ERA, too. I think if you're playing a little bit. Yeah, exactly. If it gets through the zeros. Yep. So Miller's ERA right now is 153. As he's given up two runs in six innings against the Brewers, Atlanta hosting Milwaukee. There's that curveball coming through the shadows. And wow. You see how it went dark? And what is really tough about that is if you're a hitter that is trying to pick up spin, you can't see it once it hit the, the spin totally goes away. It's like one moment you're 30 and the next moment you're 50 and you need the reading glasses. That's kind of the difference. You just can't see the details. It's like a little blurry. It's like, is it dark in here? That's what you start thinking. Get those shadows. Well, here we are. It's one and one. His ERA at the moment is 139, so he's the leader in the league. And probably, thinking along with Clint Hurdle, needs to get two more batters and finish up his afternoon. And now he's got two strikes on the batter here and one more strikeout. He would match his buddy Garrett Cole, who punched out 10 in last night's game. Garrett Cole walks his first batter of the game in the ninth inning last night. Cole has yet to allow a free pass. Two and two on Siciliani. Who has struck out and flied to center. Burnett has not walked a man. Cole walked one last night. Struck him out. That's 10. This is unbelievable. At the age of 38, AJ Burnett is looking like a rookie again. A crafty rookie, but a rookie. <laughs> Not with the stuff, but with his performance. Looking to go four and one. The catcher Kevin Ploiecki has struck out twice. KJ's batting average is higher than his ERA. Last year, A.J. Burnett had three 10 plus strikeout games. There's a bouncer to the shortstop gun. On the first, the out. And now the only question will be if A.J. Burnett returns for the eighth inning. We'll see if the Pirates can score some more runs for him. As he retires, the Mets in order in the seventh, and the fans reacting to A.J. Burnett. I got the hug. I think he's done.
podcast is presented by the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. A.J. Burnett received some hugs in the dugout. Usually an indication that he's done and just unbelievable. That's eight straight starts giving up two earned runs or less. To start the season, it's a, a new Pirates mark since 1900, and his ERA is 137. He might go through the whole season. <laughs> and so Robles, you know, the new pitcher. You know, I wonder what the, the major league mark is for, for that. Yeah, that's true. What the, what the record is. I mean, that's Starting a season. Something I have to start thinking about. It keeps going on like this. Batman now seated next to Robin. <laughs> Walker pops this ball up. Foul territory. Ball kept drifting. Didn't catch it. Went in the stands. Heck of a try by Campbell. Definitely gave it an effort. Went off his glove. I think he did get a glove on it. Yeah. Got it for a moment. It must be uh, kind of exciting for the fans to have the players dive in on top of them. Yeah, <laughs> I think catch. so. And a couple of the fans there, the players laying there, and they're not even like looking at him. They're like still scrambling for the belt ball. It's like he's not even there. Right. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. Like you can see some of the people are looking like, oh look, look, here's, here's this major league baseball player is like landing here in my. But where's lap. the ball? But and the other people are like, like he's nowhere to be found. They're just going for the ball. They don't care. Wow, that was a shot off the mask. It was like it bounced off a brick wall. You hear that sound when yeah. it hit the mask? Yeah. The wicket didn't even flinch. Hit well the other way. Was there. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Andrew McCutcheon. Oh. One ball, one strike. Home run, a fly out, and a single to center field for Andrew McCutcheon this afternoon. Antonio Bastardo going to get some work in the eight. And by the way, AJ Burnett's earned run average of 137 is not only the best currently in the National League, it's the lowest mark in the major leagues. The Astros' Dallas Keuchel leads the junior circuit 167. But Burnett's is the best in baseball right now.
<laughs> we'll see what talking, talking hitting. About. Yeah, they're not talking pitching. Uh, you know, I don't know. They, they could be talking pitching. Could be talking about what a hitter is trying to do <laughs> against them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, they also might be talking hitting. Yeah. I'm not, the thing is, I'm not sure AJ would be talking hitting. I mean, I can see he's enjoying going to the plate. Well, maybe, now, now maybe Garrett. Garrett maybe, would love maybe to talk. telling him how to hit. Garrett would love to talk hitting. Explaining to him. <laughs> By the way, the Pirates have not had an ERA leader. Oh, hit in the air toward Granderson. Keeps going back. And it's off the wall. And Drew McCutcheon going to wind up at second base with another double off the wall and right. Had one last night and again here this afternoon. He has three hits today. Yeah, that wall is, is so inviting. I just wonder, Greg, why uh, a lot of the right hand hitters don't just come here and just. Do nothing but try to pepper that wall. Like, at, least, at least you hear about how lefties will do that at Fenway. I mean, this is further away than Fenway's is, but it, it's still a similar type deal. Yeah, you're right. And I think it makes you a better hitter. Yeah. Sean Rodriguez pinch running for McCutcheon. We'll get the rest of the afternoon and evening off. Pirates haven't had many of these comfortable leads late in ball games. From second base as the throw sailed into the seats. The Pirates add on lead at eight to one. A tough throw to make this deep over toward the line. Really did a nice job setting his feet, but must have got underneath the baseball a little bit at release. It's the sixth there of the season charge to Campbell. 8 1 inside the gong. Gong one for three. Bob, the major league record for consecutive starts to begin a year while giving up two earned runs or less belongs to Al Benton of the 1945 Detroit Tigers. He started that season off with 16 consecutive starts. Oh, got two ways to go or less. Yeah. Last year, Zach Greinke began the season with nine. With nine. Or ten, rather. Ten with the Dodgers last year. 16 might be a little out of reach. That's that's something else. It's a very difficult thing to keep going like that. Just one bad game, no matter how good you are, can mess that streak up. One bad, just a little inning doesn't go right. I mean, look at Harvey as good as he is. Look how he just quickly it can happen to you. But it didn't happen to AJ today. Five more days, and we'll go out and do it again. Three for 
three and two on Gung. And uh, well, that Mets fan club started out really strong. Boy, they did. They came out. In that first inning, I mean, they were noisy. Yeah, for well, not the first inning, maybe a half an inning. Well, part of a half of an inning. They were really strong. They, well, through half a batter, they were really strong. This kind of tells the story. Yeah. They're even yelling for "Let's go, Bucks!" Now uh, it looked like it. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Met has stayed. He's not going anywhere. Still happy as can be. Got a smile on yep. his face. Uh, in, the air to, in the air to right. <laughs> Foul territory. Dude. Uh, A strong performance today. A home run, RBI double. Robbed of a hit in the sixth inning. Ruben Tejada, ball found off to the left. Playable for Campbell. Pirates will get one unearned run. Lead it eight to one. Spectacular today, Bob. Yes, he was uh, just doing everything out there today with the with the bat pitching, that the curveball working, I and mean, that was really a, a big pitch for him. The curveball, lots of uh, swings and misses with it. They could not touch the hook. And uh, even making a fine play on defense, a hard hit ball back to the middle. What's anything he didn't have going for him? Big strikeout day. No walks. Ten zero. What an afternoon for AJ. Thirty-sixth career double-digit strikeout game. Sean Rodriguez stays in the game. Now in left, Starling Marte moves to center. And Antonio Bastardo gets some work. Here in the eighth. You'll get a chance to 
And, uh, another inning under his belt. His ERA down a little. With only 10 innings of uh, work so far this year that. He can move it pretty quickly if he can. Get four or five appearances out there in a row without giving any runs up. Suffered the loss Wednesday night to the Twins when he gave up a 13th inning. Home run to Joe Maurer. First at bat of the game for Ruben Tejada. Shadows have crept past the mound. Even though the, the, the pitcher also is in the shadows, it's still difficult because of the, the fact that you're looking out beyond the pitcher and everything that's real bright. What would help him is if there was like a giant scrim that would come down behind <laughs> the pitcher. And then that would help the eyes adjust to the baseball. You could borrow ours. See, you need a nice scrim to come down behind the pitcher, and then that would be okay. The scrim eliminates that backlighting there. How about you? Uh, you know what the TV terms? We don't. So explain that. The scrim was a drive to left. Well hit. Rodriguez back and leaps up and almost makes the catch. Loses his glove in the process. Tejada hits the home run. It's eight to two. Tejada's first. Did the ball actually get in the glove and then the glove come off his hand? It looked like he had timed his uh, leap really well. Not and went over the top. The reason you see outfielders lose their glove over the fence is because they're usually only kind of half on their hand to begin with. They're going to redo they're this, Bob. They're trying to get the uh, the glove to be as long as it can, so they can extend that reach. The outfielders are always you can see the heel of their hand sticking out underneath the glove because they they have it way out in the fingertips. So when it hits the the wall like that. It'll come flipping off. They want to see if the fan interfered with it and actually reached out. Looks to me like it's a home run. I mean, it's got to be a home run, doesn't it, Greg? I think so. Yeah. The fans are seeing here at PNC Park. Just a review, not a challenge. Crew chief review and Mike Winters indicates home run. Oh, you want me to explain it? What a scrim is? Yes. All right. When, when you get, when you see our uh, our little open when we're standing up there, if you're home and we're standing here with the mics and they can see the city in the background. Every now and then you can see a, a something that's that behind this that looks like maybe like a, a screen on your yeah, window. Yeah, I've noticed that. Okay, well, what that is, there you can see it. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's well, let's get, let's there. bring it down. There, 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 okay. Here we go. There's bring your scrim. Careful, so you can't really hand. see through it. So you can see my hand barely. You can leave it up there. there now, go. now what that does is uh, that cuts down on the light coming through behind us, so that. The camera, the eye of the camera, yep. can see our faces. Because if you just let all that bright light in, then the iris on the camera is going to close down so far that you won't be able to see our faces. Just like the, your your eye closes down when you got that bright light out there, and you can't see the spin of the baseball. It's the same deal. Now, if the hitters had a scrim that would come down, then they'd be, be able, able to see. see yeah, be able to see better. Bob Walk, any any TV term questions you have? <laughs> hashtag Bucks Booth. He is Mr. Television. That's what we call him, Mr. Television. 
Never would have thought when he pl his playing days. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's saying to himself. Bob, you're better than that. One of the reasons we like these this eight to two games we can expand yeah. uh, the, the horizon a little bit. Talk about some different things. Eight to two on the pirate side. You know what the scrim is. Okay, well. Now, if you were to open up the iris to where the uh, you could see the hitters. Then it would be so bright that they would like this flood you out with, with, with light. But then if you close that down, then you can't see the ball. See now, look how the bright area looks good, but look how dark it is down there. Batman country. Yeah. But basically, what we're trying to illustrate is why hitters hate to play games this time of the afternoon because they have to deal with the changing light conditions and they don't like it. By the way, an earlier start tomorrow. Uh, that scrim will be up in the morning. Uh, Nissan Road ahead. Two lefties, Jonathan Nice for the New York Mets and Francisco Liriano for the Pirates. Coverage will start at 1 o'clock. Liriano looking uh, to get things going again. A bounce back game. Yeah, he does. Alvarez going to keep it himself. Tyrus Lagares. Two away. Here's Cervelli. Get over, get over, get over. Telling Bastardo to get over yeah. there. Just a reminder in case he forgot. Hey, any chance a catcher has to yell at the pitcher, they take it. That's what that's all about. I mean, we know to get over. You don't got to yell. So right. Spanky and Slot would yell, "Get over, get oh, over, yeah, get over!" Do yeah, you? Yeah. Like I didn't know. Well, you rarely do that. And they didn't have to yell. Never practiced that. <laughs> Balls popped up. Gone. And a home run given up by Bastardo, and then he retires the next three, and the Pirates. Cruising 8 2. Thirty nine thousand three hundred and. Eighty five. 
It's the uh, third sellout of the season, second largest crowd behind opening day. Torres is wearing that uh, Major League Baseball approved padded. Uh, you know, that used to be a padded cap, but it looks like it's just a just a, a pad, pad across the cap now. Wearing a regular hat. It's like the hat has a, a life preserver. On yeah. It. Protective band. Well, yeah, let's see where it attaches and around the back of the golf club. Just don't get hit in the back of the head. Oh, you get back there, there's a Velcro. What do you think? Would you have worn one of those if they were available? No. Probably not going to catch on. No, I don't think so. I'll see everybody wearing it anytime uh, soon. No, I, I don't see anybody wearing it. Yeah. I mean, I I could see maybe baseball mandating it someday, right. and then everybody has to have it. Voluntarily, they're not going to all. No. One of those strange-looking devices. If it was voluntary to wear a flap, you'd have guys hitting. It. Without ear yeah. flaps. And they had to make that mandatory mm -hmm. to, to make everybody wear those. One out. Catcher's mask. They probably didn't have to make them. Say big when you use your Giant Eagle Advantage card. Up to $10 on tickets for every Sunday home game. You show your Giant Eagle Advantage card at the BNC Park ticket windows or go to pirates.com slash advantage card. And of course, tomorrow, take advantage of that. Kids Sunday. And the Garrett Cole camouflage style jerseys will be given away to the youngsters tomorrow. It's kind of like the, the uh, double ear flap helmet that the hitters wear. I mean, how many guys wear those in the big leagues? Maybe two or three? They all have to wear them in the minor leagues. But they get up here, they can't wait to get rid of those big cumbersome things. And they go to the single air flap. Yeah. Spring training, that's how you can tell a lot of times the minor league call ups. They come up, they got the double air flap helmet. Two on Cervelli. He's grounded out, walked, and singled. Pirates are going to hand Matt Harvey his second loss of the season and his earned run average at the start of the day. Ninth best in the National League, 198 balloon to 291. Tejada. Jose Tabata will pinch hit now for Antonio Bastardo. Jose, oh, maybe the biggest hand of the day. His career numbers and uh, for Tabata since coming up just the other day. Two for two, two RBI pinch hit singles. Adamus Lees will take over in the ninth. It's 
to second. For the 4 3 put out. And three outs to get. For the Pirates' second straight victory over the New York Mets. Francisco Liriano takes the hill. Coverage starts at 1 o'clock of Pirates pregame. Presented by W.B. Mason here on Root Sports. Francisco Liriano will go at it tomorrow afternoon against Jonathan Nice. Pirates will try for the sweep. I'll vote for that. We're staying with the Batman. Nothing against Mr. Manfred, but maybe when Mr. Manfred's uh, Manfred days are over, Bob, would you consider running? Oh, sure. I'll take, take the job. I'll take the job. All right. So, Mr. Manfred, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Bob Walk, and I take him under your wing yeah, yeah. over the next few years. Yeah. Jung Ho Gong moves Show me the ropes. To, to third. I just thought that was the Batman theme continuing. Commissioner. Oh, of course. <laughs> Commissioner Walk. Josh Harrison moves from third to second. Here is Radames Lees looking for the last three outs of this ball game. Eight two. Pirates up on the Mets. There's a good pitch right on the outside corner. Out of Lees. You saw those numbers on your screen earlier. I missed him. Over well, well, he's one and three with a 3.86 ERA. This is his 11th appearance. 19 hits and 16 in the third innings. He's walked 10 and struck out 17, and opponents are batting 297 against Lees. And a line drive to center field. Daniel Murphy with his third hit. Man can hit. They have rally caps on up there. A lot of pictures. Yeah. Got the flash going because they don't have a scrim. That's right. Johnny Manel pinch hitting. Yeah, look at that. Now that's positive thinking right there. Eight to two. You got to give it to them. You really do. Yeah. They are not going to give up. They are competitors. They're knocking the little orange sticks yeah. together. Yep. Manel one for fourteen since being called up from Triple A Las Vegas. 
And a pop up on the infield. Alvarez comes in. Cervelli bumps into the uh, man at the plate, and he's he automatically going to be called out. Manel ruled for interference by Mike Michlinski, but he could recover. Cervelli recovered Cervelli anyway. To make that play. How do you score that, Greg? Just Cervelli just put out. Put out, yeah. That's pretty easy. So it didn't make any difference. In there, That's right. Caught it or not? Well, Steve scored. I'm guessing he's no longer keeping score. I wonder if he's even in the booth. I understand he uh, took off about the ninth inning last night. Sometimes you got to go. Next door and grab a cup of coffee. He went for coffee. Yep. Yeah. Came in this morning, said, Tim, here's your coffee. Yep. It's relaxing on a Saturday afternoon, Memorial Day weekend. Eric Campbell takes a ball. One out. And the Pirates leading eight to two, having out hit the Mets 10 7. And the uh, Cardinals will take on the Royals again tonight, continuing their interleague series. The Royals winning last night. And the Pirates could move to within six and a half games of the Cardinals in the Central. Edinson Volquez, Pirates will be rooting for the former teammate tonight. Be opposed by John Lackey. Cubs start the day three and a half back of the Redbirds there in Phoenix tonight. Ball hit in the air toward right center. Marte back. <laughs> Two down. <laughs> Two outs in the top of the ninth. Everybody up. What a, a wonderful day. Game had it all. Well, Siciliani is 0 for 3. He just swung at that pitch, didn't he? He did, yes. And down eight to two, he just swung and missed the pitch almost in the dirt. Yep. First pitch. Foul tip. Thought it was going to be a low scoring pitcher's duel, but only one sided uh, the low scoring part. Close. That fan thinks we've got a one run late. <laughs> I'm upset about that call. It was on the edge. Third sellout of the season and the second largest crowd since opening day. Pirates hosted. The Detroit Tigers back on Monday, April the 13th, 39,933 that afternoon, 39,385 today. What are you watching? Asking Mr. Michlinski. A little bit wide. Seven. A 
definitely a power arm. We just got word, Bob, that uh, back to back 10 or more strikeout performances by Pirates pitchers haven't, hasn't happened since 1984. So fans came out to see Garrett Cole last night, fan 10. Today, A.J. Burnett struck out 10. And back in May of 1984, back to back starts. John Candelaria was one of those, May 23rd, 1984. And back to back. Ten strike of performances. Larry McWilliams followed that up with double digit strikeouts. Over 30 years since Pirate starters have gone back to back in such fashion. Another 3 2 pitch. That'll do it. Raise it. Back to back W's. And this one in decisive fashion. Pedro Alvarez. A couple of extra base hits, a home run, RBI double. The Pirates collect 10 hits. Three hit day for Andrew McCutcheon and Josh Harrison extending his hitting streak to 10 straight games on his bobblehead day. Two for four, drove in a couple, scored one, stole a base. Fun afternoon. That was just an absolutely Park. great afternoon. Uh, <laughs> said earlier, th th is there anything that was missing for the fans today? I can't think. Of anything, the, the long balls, the pitching, clutch hits, everything was right there. The heroes came through. What an afternoon! A beautiful afternoon. Big W for the Buckos. Let's go down to Paul and Teague. All right, Greg and Bob, thank you very much. And I think Walkie summed it up best. Teague, obviously. If you're a fan at this game and you weren't wearing the blue of the Mets, and they brought a few fans, we have to give oh. credit for that. What is there possibly missing from your day as a Pirate fan? You got a little bit of everything. No, uh, there's nothing missing from the day today if you're a Pirate fan. This uh, this ball game gave you everything. You know, you, number one, the home team won. Number two, your starting pitcher was just outstanding. You know, we talked about it being a pitching matchup when we first started out. Well, it was a little bit one-sided, but you didn't know that in the beginning, and A.J. came out on fire. The offense against a very tough competitor, you know, they were able to get it done. So, uh, you know, all in all, no, as a Pirate fan, there's not much you can go home and say, boy, I wish I'd have seen this. <laughs> well, what you're going to see right now is our own Robbie Insmikowski. He's standing by with Josh Harrison. Robbie. How about Josh Harrison on his bobblehead day? Two hits, two RBIs, a run scored all against Matt Harvey, one of the dominant young pitchers in all Major League Baseball. But, Josh, first of all, this is the second largest crowd to sell out, second largest crowd of the season, biggest since opening day. What was this atmosphere like, and how do you describe it? Oh, man, it was crazy uh, to be able to come out and, you know, you got a matchup like Harvey and Burnett. You know, that's a game you want to watch. And, you know, we got some runs on them early. Matt Harvey is a really impressive body of work just in his third season pitching in the big leagues. Why are we able to, to force him out of the game earlier than he ever has in his entire career? Uh, we put pressure on him. We got guys on early, and uh, we got good pitchers to hit and didn't miss them. And uh, that's, that's the name of this game. You get a pitch, you don't want to miss it, against, uh, especially against guys like him. When you have a guy that dominant, you're going in to face him. You've only faced him once in your entire career. He's only faced Pirates once, I should say. How do you plan for that? Uh, it's baseball. We plan for everybody the same way every day. Um, regardless of who we're facing, baseball is a day-to-day -day game. And he can be dominant one start and not dominant the next. So we come in and treat every day the same. And today we jumped on him early. How about when you look at Garrett Cole, what he did last night, what A.J. Burnett did this afternoon, 10 strikeouts and seven innings of work. What kind of boost does that provide a ball club? Oh, it provides a lot. We got him some runs early. And A.J.'s A.J., man. He goes out there and he does this every time he starts. And... We were able to get him some runs early, and it was nice for him. You have a 10-game hit streak. I'm going to put words in your mouth. What clicked in Philadelphia when you started the streak? Uh, what clicked was maybe a couple balls falling here and there. Nothing, nothing that I had to do different. Just baseball, a game you got to stay with. I hit some balls hard that weren't hits. And uh, in Philly, I got a couple that wasn't hit that hard, so it started to turn for me. Now, Josh, your bobblehead day today, your normal kick-kick swing routine between pitches is something... That was on this bobblehead. How do you assess this? Break it down for me. Uh, they did a really good job. Uh, pants up. You know, they got the beard. And uh, they definitely got the, the, the foot kick with the bat. I, I give it two thumbs up. There it is. The review from the man, Jay Hay. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Josh Harrison, the Buckos, victorious for the second straight day.
All right, Robbie, a couple of thumbs up for you and Josh. No question about that. Nice day on, on, on your own bobblehead day. Well, as we promised during the broadcast, it is time for Miller Time, and it is presented by Miller Life. And we are going to acknowledge right now this man. His name is Alan James Burnett, and he was feeling today. He has now had nine straight starts, allowing two earned runs or less. Today's day, nice day at the office. Seven innings, five hits, one run. 10 strikeouts. He did not block a batter. So today's Miller Lite player of the game is that man right there, Alan James Burnett. AJ was on fire as he picks up now his fourth straight win. Pirates start to get some runs for AJ and things start clicking. And for the first time since 84, Pirate fans have watched their pitchers strike out 10 or more batters in consecutive games. Teak and I are just getting warmed up. Pirates post game is straight ahead. A very nice and tidy 8-2 win over the visiting Mets. They have now won two straight. Looking to get out the broom tomorrow and take care of business. Pirates post game is next.